Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr M, where every week I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week I'm taking some inspiration from my class novel The Many Worlds of Albie Bright by Christopher Edge and diving into the world of quantum physics as I explore the double slit experiment. Let's check it out. The Many Worlds of Albie Bright is a children's book written by Christopher Edge and it follows the story of Albie, a boy whose mother has died, as he explores quantum physics to try and find a parallel universe where his mother is still alive. The book is filled with real science and one of the things that the book mentions is the double slit experiment. So I decided to explore that this week so that you could learn a bit more about the properties of light and how they operate in quantum physics. For a long time, light was thought of as a wave, and that was explored by Thomas Young, a British scientist, in 1807 when he performed an interference experiment. However, in 1905, Albert Einstein was able to explain the photoelectric effect, which cannot be done if light only operates as a wave, and therefore Einstein asserted that light also operates as a particle, which he called photons. The interference experiment by Thomas Young, otherwise explained as the double slit experiment, can demonstrate how light operates as both a particle and as a wave. To start with, I've set up my laser pen to shine directly at a wall, and you can see that it's got the main part of light with a wee bit of light around the edge, as you would expect from a laser just shining at a wall. And this is the photons all travelling in the one direction and hitting the wall as they leave the laser pin. Next what I'm going to do is tape a bit of thin wire to the edge of the work surface and then I'm going to shine the laser straight at the wire to try and split the beam. And you'll see when I hold the sheet of black paper behind the wire that the light is split in two. You can see the line of the wire going through the middle of the light. However, let's now look at where the light is hitting the wall. You'll see stretching out to both sides of the light there is what's called an interference pattern. This is where there are strips of red light intersected by strips of darkness. As the light from the laser hits the wire, the photons, the light particles, can either go to the left or the right of the wire. But there's no way for us to tell which side the photon is going to. And in fact, as they split at the wire, the photons start to act as a wave rather than a particle and every individual photon actually interferes with itself. When there's no way of knowing what side of the wire the photon is going to, it actually goes to both sides at the same time. So when it is reaching the wall and it is spread out, every individual photon is interfering with itself and that's what's causing this interference pattern. But how can we prove that it's because we don't know what side of the wire that the photon is going to that leads to this interference? I've got some polarising film and I'm going to cut two squares out of it. Then I'm going to turn one of the squares on its side. This changes the axis that that square of polarising film is on. You can tell that I've got the two bits of polarising film on opposite axes because when I overlap them and hold them in front of the laser, they stop any light getting through at all. What the polarising film does is it only allows light through 50% of the time on the axis that it's tilted on. Because I have them both set to a different axis, that means we are able to tell whether the light is going to come through the left hand side or the right hand side of the wire. So I'll attach the two bits of polarising film together at the top and bottom and I'm going to attach these onto the wire directly behind it. Now when I turn the laser on and it hits the wire, we can tell because of the polarising film whether the photons are going to the left or right. But look at the light on the wall now. There is no interference pattern. This is unusual because nothing has actually changed. The light from the laser is still hitting the wire. The photons still need to go to either the left or right. 
But the difference is, because we can now tell whether they're going to the left or going to the right because of the polarising film, the photons will just go to one of these two sides and will not interfere with themselves. It is only when you cannot tell which side they're going to that the photons actually go to both sides at the same time. When light operates as a wave, it spreads out into its surroundings. So when these photons are passing the left and right side of the wire, they are spreading out as they go by it and are heading towards the wall, and this is what leads to the photons interfering with each other, because the two sets of waves are overlapping and hitting into each other. Imagine throwing two stones into a pond at the same time, and the waves from these stones coming together and merging. They cancel each other out, and there is no wave where they touch. This is what is happening with the light. Where the waves from the light are meeting, that is where we get the black lines in the interference pattern as the photons are interfering with themselves. This is just one of the many mind-boggling things about quantum physics, and it does become really complex science. But this was something that I was able to visually demonstrate to you at home. And as bizarre as it seems that a photon can actually go to the left and right of the wire at the same time and interfere with itself, it has been clearly demonstrated. I would thoroughly recommend reading The Many Worlds of Albie Bright, even as an adult. It's just a great story and a brilliant adventure with some real-life science that Christopher Edge has obviously taken a bit of time to research and wrapped up in an engaging story. I know this week's STEM with Mr N has been a bit more complex and not quite as easy a one to replicate at home, but I just love science and sharing all the fascinating things that you can find out about the world through it, especially when it's something I can demonstrate to you visually. I'll be back next week with another demonstration, and in the meantime, like and share the video, and you can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here, and I've put links here to the other STEM demonstrations that I've done so far. This has been STEM with Mr N, exploring the double slit experiment.